Hi everyone, this is Jerry. This is a game between Paul Morphy of New Orleans uh, versus an amateur. It was played back in 1858 and I think this game acts as a, a good example of in some sense how not to play. Uh, you'll see some uh, principles violated by black in this game uh, but also some good attacking chess by Paul Morphy. So hopefully you take something away from this. Morphy with white opens with e4. We have a king pawn game knight f3, knight c6, and bishop c4, taking direct aim at the weak point f7. We could see knight f6 here, two knights defense. Uh, that could be met with knight g5 when we're into some uh, crazy type of play. Pressure against f7. We're not seeing that in this game. Instead, bishop c5 uh, signals the joko piano or quiet game, but this game is not too quiet. b4 indicates the Evans gambit. Uh, what's its purpose? We'll see that shortly. After bishop takes pawn, what we have is a very key move, c3. What is its purpose? One, it's allowing um, the support of this d4 advance, as well as increasing the queen's mobility. It can now come out along this uh, direction, and you'll note that it comes without loss of time. Since there's an attack on the bishop, this bishop will now have to move. So white is not losing time, it's gaining time for this advance. After bishop a5, d4 right away, and it's very important that you do do this move right now, and immediately put a question to this e5 pawn. You really want black to give up its center point right away. Um, if black were to try and support it with d6 or f6, queen e7, queen f6, uh, it's going to be punished very badly. You kind of re reject the queen moves because the bishop can harass the queen. If queen e7, bishop here or if queen f6 eventually the bishop could come out here maybe directly or at a later stage uh, so bringing the queen out that early probably is just not a good idea d6 will fail for the following reasons after takes uh, how to recapture if you do with the pawn we have the exchange of queens and no matter how the queen the queen is recaptured black is going to end up losing a pawn you take with the knight you lose e5 and you take with the king you lose f7 and your king's uncastled so taking like that with the pawn's no good. Taking with the knight is even worse. Knight takes knight, pawn takes knight, and the current state of the king, unfortunately, is that it's overloaded. It has two jobs. Not a good position to be in. Um, when you are in that sort of position, you're subjected to the tactic of deflection, and that's exactly what we have going on here. Bishop takes pawn, trying to deflect the king away from defense of the queen. King to e7, the only way to maintain um, protection of the queen, but that still runs into a, a deflecting move. Bishop a3, the king is going to have to just grab the bishop, and uh, now you're going to lose your queen and eventually your king. So, in other words, trying to do support this point here with d6 isn't good, nor is a move like f6 that just kind of suicidal. Um, you're opening up this diagonal, your king is never going to be able to castle, and actually there's just going to be a sacrifice against e5. Let's see how. Takes takes uh, you could just take like this opens up the diagonal here and it's actually worth noting um, that when you do move f6 you not only open up this diagonal but you're also opening up this diagonal so that's why these knight maneuvers to e5 allowing the queen to pivot on h5 can really cause you a headache so f6 takes 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 queen h5 check if you block with the knight like this you lose this bishop here so that's just one way, and you're probably going to lose the game in not too long from then. So uh, f6 isn't good, d6 isn't good, bringing the queen out, not so hot either. In summary, you have to give up your center. So that's one of the purposes of this Evans Gambit, to force black to give up its center point. Now, there is one thing, um, one other move that black could be making. Instead of bishop a5, they could move bishop d6. It seems a little bit awkward because... You know, if this bishop thinks it's going to come out along this diagonal anytime soon, it's going to have to think again. Um, but then again, this bishop from d6 is reinforcing this e5 point. So if d4 comes right now, black doesn't necessarily have to react to the pressure against e5. Two attackers, two defenders. So black is adequately set up defending e5. But we're not seeing that in this game. Instead, bishop a5, and now d4 immediately. Um, it's also... Uh, worth noting that you do have to put pressure on e5 right away. If you do a very routine developing move, that's um, completely a different story. 
knight f6 can be played, and now if d4, black can take, recapture, and now d5. Notice the knight is developed and supporting this advance. If takes, takes, um, although this file is completely open, there's no good check to really give the black king. Can't do the rook move because the bishop's watching over e1. And the queen check, um, is this really an inconvenience to black? Probably not. Can just continue with development and it's just a single move away from castling. You might think, well, the bishop can stop the king from going there, but maybe black can just go here and think about castling queenside. Or maybe even there's the idea of just saying, hey, let's trade some pieces. I have not only a material gain, but there's an isolated pawn and I'm controlling d5. I'm going to be able to castle kingside and I'm going to be completely safe. So, in other words, by by castling, doing this very routine developing move of castling right now, that's no good. You have to immediately play this d4 move, putting a question to e5. So after pawn takes pawn, now white can go ahead and castle. Uh, there's no need to really go ahead and grab this pawn right away. Really, the, the idea is to just have black concede the pawn that was on e5. It has done just that by capturing, so now it's time to just go ahead and get our pieces out. This pawn will fall eventually. And, uh, well, as it turns out in this game, white ends up sacrificing or gambiting another pawn. So white just castles, and black goes ahead and recaptures another pawn. So notice that by making these pawn captures, these aren't developing moves. You know, developing moves are getting these guys out. So in the meantime, white is advancing their own development, and black is making these captures from e5 to d4 to c3. Next, just bishop a3, getting the bishop out along this diagonal. Very uh, nice placement for this bishop. Uh, it's preventing the king from castling, or it would take at least a little bit more work to castle. If the knight plays here, you're going to need first d6 before you could castle. Or a knight move here would be less than optimal because it's not focused on this e4 point. So just a, a good natural developing move uh, on a3. And now d6, just trying to blunt this bishop's diagonal and also allowing this bishop to come out. And now queen to b3, another common move that you'd see from the Evans Gambit. The placement of this queen functions well, uh, focused on f7, but not only that, if this bishop gets a little bit too excited trying to come out in this direction too early, there could be the dual threat of hitting b7 and f7 right here. Um, so what next? We have knight h6. Unfortunately, it's, it's going to be a little bit awkward um, for black to go ahead and guard f7, you know, what What are the other choices from here? Uh, if you try to do it with the queen, uh, that's kind of crazy, putting it opposite the bishop. Uh, could run into moves like e5, just trying to um, attack this pin piece, you know, placing the queen here, you're placing this pawn in a pin, or, you know, queen to f6 instead, uh, that could still potentially run into a move like e5, just trying to make this pawn uh, flinch so that it, it would still make uh, life that much more difficult for the black king. Uh, so knight h6, you know, there is no bishop here to pick him off, so it seems like a reasonable move. Uh, also, if you if you do have to watch over your pawns, as is the case in this position, try and have uh, the, the lesser valued piece watch over it. So instead of having, you know, a nine point piece come here and watch over a pawn, have, you know, a three point piece do that work. So just continuing with development, knight c3, and it just goes ahead and uh, recoups one of the pawns. So the current state here is that white is down two pawns. So wh where's the compensation exactly? Well, again, it's in the form of a lead in development. So all the minor pieces are out for white. They're already ready to place the rooks on files and actually try and create more open files. By creating uh, more open files, you're increasing your pieces' mobility. So after knight c3, or knight takes on c3, we have the bishop actually giving itself up for the knight. Um, I think this move was played really to just keep this knight out of d5. I, I think that could maybe uh, cause black a headache. Um, I'm not so sure what would occur after just castles here. Maybe just pawn to e5 right away, since this, this pawn is uh, pinned to the rook. Um, also, maybe a move like just rook to a1 first might be best. Uh, this knight is awkwardly placed. This bishop, on the other hand, um, well, this knight on h6 is awkwardly placed, and this bishop here really isn't doing a whole lot along this diagonal. I mean, after this knight moves, yeah, it's watching over 
this square right here but other than that um, I could I could see why black would maybe want to just give itself up for uh, this knight on c3 you know this knight being able to pivot on d5 or even e4 at some point uh, this knight may very well just turn out to be better than this bishop so black ends up giving himself up giving the bishop up from this position instead of uh, castles there it's just bishop takes knight and uh, queen takes bishop so there's an additional asset that black has or excuse me white has in this position and it's the two bishops we have an open position and a lead in development and now the queen is putting pressure on the unprotected g7 point black now castles defending g7 and now just rook on a to d1 put, placing this pawn in two different pins pin to both uh, the queen and the rook so now there's ideas of just pawn to e5 just creating pawn exchanges just to open files to open diagonals for the white pieces that are already out knight to g4 looking to just um, get to this e5 square and uh, that's a very very good move um, it, it's already served its purpose on h6 to watch over f7 that's not needed anymore so it's time to just reposition um, h3 just really just uh, keeping the initiative here putting pressure on black and after knight to knight g to e5 we have the exchange of knights and the knight recaptures hitting this bishop this is an important position right here how to react to this pressure against this bishop um, where would you go if you were playing the white pieces here um, playing to b3 seems like it's a very natural move um, but you know after a move like bishop to e6 you know you already have to start to watch you know you are with the white pieces here down two pawns so you kinda have to have some pieces remaining on the board for uh, you to show any type of advantage so instead of this bishop b3 move we have bishop to e2 just trying to maintain the bishop pair not allowing this bishop to come here and just threaten the exchange of bishops and now f5 um, this is a very very critical point in the game right here this pawn to f5 advance is not to be recommended and the reason for that is because black is creating more lines of attack against them um, granted you know the exchange of these two pawns would allow this bishop's mobility to increase as well as this rook but at the same time you're allowing the white pieces to have more possibilities as well um, maybe a better defense is to play f6 and the reason for that is to anticipate f4 that is the move that's coming to just kick this knight away from its central post and now the knight can retreat to f7 uh, with the goal of trying to just um, keep pieces on this e5 square trying to just prevent this sort of advance although I believe this sort of advance would still come I think this is a little bit more uh, this would put up a little bit more of a fight by black so uh, back in the 19th century many players were um, very uh, greedy you know they're up two pawns and they want to they often would like to just hang on to the material that was gained and it wasn't until Steinitz started to introduce um, all these positional type of features in the game and uh, let it be known that it's okay to let's say uh, give back the pawn in order to decrease an attack by your uh, opponent uh, but we weren't we aren't seeing that in this game f6 the difference between f6 and f5 is oh, is very big so f5 is played and now f4 is uh, played immediately just kicking the knife to a less than optimal square it chooses c6 um, I guess it could also go to f7 but I guess c6 is a little bit more active a little bit more center centralized and now bishop to c4 the bishop gets back on this diagonal and not only that um, it, it well it's giving check to the black king but not only that you know don't, don't just go check ha happy in your own games have a deeper meaning than just checking your opponent's king what's another meaning behind this bishop to c4 move well not only is it giving check to the black king but it's watching over e6 if you uh, just take a quick snapshot of this picture or of this uh, position right here you'll see that the bishop and rook are really just not contributing to the position and if this bishop 
is to be developed, where is it likely to go? e6. So not only does this bishop check the king, but it watches over this e6 square so that this bishop can't be developed. So bishop c4, king h8, and now bishop to b2. Um, another move to maybe consider is just e5 right away. I'm sure that that would be a good move as well, just taking advantage of uh, the crossfire that this pawn is in right here. But it's hard to also argue with the move that threatens a mate in one. And unfortunately for black, they're in a position where they have to watch over pawns. Uh, not a position you really want to be in. And especially if it's a, the piece that has to watch over this pawn is your queen. And that's exactly what ends up having to be done in this position. The rook can't play to either of these squares because of the bishop. So the queen unfortunately has to play to e7 to watch over g7. And now we simply have rook on d to e1. Um, I'm not sure there's a whole big a difference between you know which rook to move here. Um, I think just the differences are minuscule. Um, I could potentially see you know these two files being a little bit more important now than this d file. But again, the differences are very minor. After that, the, the threat is going to be just taking on f5, discovered attack against the queen. So now we have rook to f6, just trying to shelter the pressure that uh, white has mounted against the black king. Pawn takes pawn, discovered attack against the queen, and queen to f8. Uh, and now just a very, very, very strong move. Rook to e8, uh, sacrificing the rook. Uh, what's what's going to be the follow-up? Can you see it? After queen takes rook, queen takes rook. And there's no time to take the queen because we have mate. Um, it's worth noting that, you know, the bishop pair by itself in an open position is an asset. But um, you could get a little bit more technical. Two bishops that are functioning along adjacent diagonals, files that are next to one another. Um, they, that could come with you know, very devastating results. Uh, but not only that, if those two diagonals are aimed directly at your opponent's king, that could really spell trouble for your opponent. So just um, some food for thought. So from here, queen takes rook, queen takes rook, and now queen to e7, just trying to exchange queens and hopefully fight out uh, an end game where it's just uh, these three pieces versus these three pieces or just a queenless end game in other words but another stunning move by white queen takes g7 just absolutely brilliant um, there's no other choice but to take the queen and now although white is down a queen f6 and now what to do there's a simple mate threat and how to cope with it there's unfortunately no good uh, response for black from this position uh, a move like queen here is going to run into f7, discover check, queen block, and take your pick. Uh, you can promote to a queen or a rook and give mate. So really there's just no way out of this, and I believe just out of momentum, black played the following moves. Just it's kind of like something a computer would do just to prolong the game. Um, these moves were actually recorded. They were played out up until this point right here. Uh, rook to g1 was played, and... Uh, some other moves were played from this game, but they were unrecorded. And so uh, just some moves from now, black ended up resigning, but uh, there's really just no way out. Not only is white up a piece now, but this pawn is going to play to f7, followed by a move like rook to g8. Just a quick example, if rook to f8, pawn here, this rook is coming here next, and it's going to be just lights out. So that's all for this game. I hope you got something out of it. Take care. Bye.